What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're checking out this big CPU cooler right here. This is the Deepcool Assassin 4. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now to start things off, there is a white version of the cooler and a black version of the cooler. And I deep cools attention to detail on these. The black cooler of course is all black, including all of the cabling and the white cooler is all white, including the cabling as well. So really nice attention to detail there. Now for the remainder of this review, we will be showing you the white version of the cooler. Now, as we take a first look at the cooler here, we can see it is really big, probably one of the biggest CPU coolers that we've taken a look at all year. Now I'll go ahead and put the official dimensions up on the screen so you can see just how big it is. It's also pretty heavy as well, coming in at 1,575 grams. This cooler does have a dual tower, dual fan design, but instead of having the fan on the front of the cooler, we actually have the first of the two heatsink towers. This design choice allows the Assassin 4 to be a massive cooler, but not cover your memory. The heatsink towers use the same type of matrix fin design that we've seen on previous deep cool coolers. These by themselves are visually appealing, so not having a fan in the front does not necessarily take away from the looks of your build. On the opposite side of the cooler, we have our first fan, which is a 120 millimeter FDB fan. The fan clips right onto the back of the cooler and can be adjusted up to make clearance for large VRM cooling or IO covers around your CPU socket. This fan is pretty much the only thing on the cooler that's not white as the blades and outer frame are gray. The second fan is actually in the center of the cooler. So to gain access to it, you easily remove the top piece of the cooler, which is held into place by magnets. And then you press on the two clips on the side of the fan and then you can pull it out. The second fan is a 140 millimeter FDB fan. Both of the fans will spin between 500 and 1700 RPM with a max airflow of 79.1 max air pressure of 2.44 and max noise level of 29.3 dBA. As we look at the cooler from the side, we can see that it does have a very cohesive design. This might be the best looking massive cooler that I've ever taken a look at. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, the cooler design goes as follows. Heatsink tower, 140 millimeter fan, the second heatsink tower, and then a 120 millimeter fan. Up on the top of the cooler, there is a small switch this will toggle between performance and quiet mode. There's also a small deep cool logo. Coming up from the base of the cooler are seven six millimeter thick copper heat pipes. These are painted white to go with the white theme of the cooler. These go up into each heatsink tower in a U fashion, which is pretty standard when it comes to tower coolers. The base of the cooler is nickel plated copper. While we can see some machining marks, it has to be one of the cleanest CPU cooler bases that we've seen all year. When it comes to installation, we're gonna be doing our installation on an Intel Z490 system. This means that our installation process should be pretty much the same across all modern Intel sockets. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is find the Intel backplate and attach it through the backside of your motherboard, lining up the pegs with the holes in your motherboard. Then go ahead and take the Intel spacing screws and screw them onto the pegs in the backplate. This will secure the backplate to your motherboard. Now find the Intel mounting bars and secure them in place with the included thumb screws. These bars need to be installed on the top and bottom of the socket. Apply the included thermal paste and then remove the center fan from the cooler. Carefully place the cooler on top of your CPU, lining up the screws in the center of the cooler with the standoffs on the mounting bars. Using the included screwdriver, place it down through the center of the cooler and then tighten the screws to secure the cooler. With the cooler secured, go ahead and reinstall the center fan and then put the top cap back on the cooler. Finally, reconnect the fans to the included Y adapter and then plug that Y adapter into your CPU fan header on your motherboard. With the cooler fully installed, you can see that we have 100% RAM clearance, which is definitely nice considering the size of this cooler. It is worth noting that the cooler does sit very, very close to our rear case fan and to our graphics card.
As we come to the end here, I have to say that I am really impressed with the Assassin 4. One, I mean, just look at it. It is one of the best looking air coolers that I've ever seen, especially for its size. And I really like that Deepcool has, you know, really kind of made this change over the past few years really making their products stand out and making them just sleek and sophisticated. And I think if you are doing an air-cooled build and you want a high-performance air cooler, this definitely has to be at the top of your list, especially if it's going to be a build that is going to have a tempered glass side panel that is going to be, a, you know, something that you're going to want to show off because these are going to look excellent in your system. But beyond that, you know, the biggest thing when it comes to an air cooler is performance and this cooler definitely delivers. It's actually tied with three other air coolers for the best performance out of all of the air coolers in our test group. And it is worth noting that two of those coolers actually completely cover all of your memory slots in this you know, this one doesn't, which is really cool. So, you know, if you do want to show off that RGB memory, this is going to be one of those massive high performance air coolers that does not cover your memory, which I definitely like. And that's, you know, because they've designed this. So the, the first fan is actually in the center, not on the front of the cooler. Again, I really like that design choice. And again, the cooler looks so good. It doesn't matter if the front fan is not there. It just, like I said, these coolers just look great. And one thing I was actually really impressed with as well, is you know this is a massive cooler but it's actually really easy to get installed like i didn't have any issues with installation and even though we do all of our installations outside of the case so we can show you how it's done i think again even though this is a big cooler you could totally get this cooler installed you know in a case like this with the motherboard mounted inside the case you wouldn't have to remove everything so that's really awesome there as well. You know, the only thing, the only downside I would say to this cooler is that it is big. One, it's 164 millimeters tall. So that means it's not gonna fit in certain cases. Secondly, as you can see, it sits very, very close to our graphics card as well as very close to our rear fan. More worried about the graphics card just because if I wanna swap this card out or take the card out and clean it, it is gonna be really hard to press that lever to release my graphics card. So that's the only downside to this cooler. But overall, I think it's one of the best coolers that you know we've taken a look at all year. And again, if you are looking for a high-end air cooler, this is one that I would definitely recommend. Now, if you have any questions about this cooler, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And we will have links to our full written review on thinkcomputers.org, as well as where you can go ahead and pick this cooler up, of course, in the description. Now, if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.